Hi all, welcome to this course on PPC, Production Planning Control. Today we will be learning about the methods of aggregate planning. So generally when we need, when we need to do the aggregate planning, there will be different techniques or different methods. And the first one is the technique for aggregate planning ranging from informal trial and error approaches like just speaking or ask, asking with different stages asking at different stages with different employees and the other parts will be learning which is usually using simple tables or graphs to get more formalized the general processor consists of these following steps that is to determine the demand for each period determine the capacity for each period this capacity should match with the demand which means it may require the inclusion of overtime or subcontracting Identifying the company departmental or union policies which are continuously present or pertinent. Pertinent. For example, maintaining a certain safety stock level, maintaining a reasonably stable workforce, back order policies, overtime policies, inventory level policies, and other less explicit rules such as the nature of employment with the individual industry, the possibility of a bad image, the loss of goodwill, and to determine the unit costs for units which are produced. These costs typically include the basic production costs, which are fixed and variable costs, as well as direct and indirect labor costs, which also includes the costs associated with making changes in capacity. So inventory holding costs must also be considered as storage, insurances, taxes, spoilage, and obsolescence costs are generally present. And finally, the back order costs must be computed. While difficult to measure, this generally includes the expediting cost, loss of customer goodwill, the revenue loss from all co cancelled orders which develops and finally we need to develop an alternative plans and compute the cost for each and if it is satisfactory the plans emerge and select the one among which satisfies the objectives. Frequently this is the plan with the least cost or else we again return back to the costs which are typically including the basic production costs. So this is how a trial and error approach and the other formalized approach generally follow these steps in order to get a better output or for aggregate planning. To understand this better, we have an example where, where the example states that the plan determined utilizing a level strategy. Hence, the employment levels and the output levels remain constant while inventory is allowed to build up in the earlier periods only only which can be drawn back down in later periods as demand increases. So we note these back orders are utilized in order to avoid the overtime or subcontract. Hence, initially first, the computed cost for in individual variables of the plans are as follows. Like in a manufacturing unit, we are having the following costs such as output costs with regular time of $5 per unit, overtime $8 per unit, subcontracted $12 per unit, with other costs such as inventory, carrying costs, $3, back orders, $10, cost of aggregate planning utilizing a level strategy, and the output costs. So, from these, we find out the output tasks or output costs, which are for regular time working, we have $5 per unit into 1500, which gives us $7,500. Since in the starting stage, we do not, do not produce the overtime, so it will be $8 into 0, which is 0 subcontracted no subcontractors which are present so that will be dollar 10 into 0 which is 0 other costs which is the inventory carrying cost which is dollar 3 into 850 which is 2500 back orders dollar 10 into 100 which is 1000 and when we add all of these that is 7500 plus 2500 plus 1000 we'll be getting the total cost which is 10900 and based upon this if the budget allocation or the budget availability is present then we'll go for this deal or else we'll go for again cutting down of the cost and decide as per this aggregate plan. And this is how simply aggregate planning is done for a small example. In the same manner for a large industry or a very large industry also it is being done but it takes a numerous steps or large number of steps for deciding this aggregate planning process. So this is how the aggregate planning is generally being decided or decisions regarding the aggregate planning is done based upon the entire costs which are generally being calculated. Thank you.